Hello. Sonnet 19 by John Milton is entitled When I Consider How My Light Is Spent. It is more popularly known as On His Blindness. As this title suggests, the piece is about the fact that the poet went blind. If you look at his time period, it is 1608 to 1674 and he went completely blind in 1652, which means that he lived without his eyesight for the last 22 years of his life. So he's reflecting upon this event that has come to be in his life and in that process he's also talking about his belief in God and his belief that perhaps we are not here to present something to God but to only follow the responsibilities that we have taken upon ourselves and do them with honesty day after day and only then we shall be able to achieve the aim of life. John Milton is one of the greatest English poets and his work Paradise Lost is considered as the epitome of English literature and today we shall be discussing Sonnet 19 written by John Milton when I consider how my light is spent. My name is Neha and you're watching this video on the Pratyansha channel. John Milton in his sonnet which is autobiographical in nature starts with the line which very clearly expresses that now he's lost his eyesight. He begins to say when I consider how my light is spent ere half my days in this dark world and wide and that one talent which is death to hide lodged with me useless though my soul more bent. Very clearly, in the first four lines, he's expressed that this world has now become darkness to him. It's a dark, wide world and he's lost his eyesight. And it is actually death which should take this capacity away from us. When we die, then we cannot see because now we are no more. How is it that you lose your eyesight before you're dead? And he uses the word light for eyesight. And that's a very interesting thing, I would think. He does just doesn't really say that he's lost the capability to see. He says the light has gone out of his life. If the light has gone out of his life, that is a tragedy that he's trying to come to terms with in writing this sonnet. So when I consider that how I've lost my eyesight, that my light is spent. Also the word spent, when he says that it means that perhaps God Almighty has written in all of our destiny, how much of light shall we have in our life? And I have spent all of it. I have used it all and therefore I have it no more now. So my light is spent there is no more light in my life I cannot see anymore before half my days he feels that half of my life is still ahead of me I'm still not a very old person and therefore it's really not nice that I have lost my eyesight because now this world is very dark and very wide. It's a large uncharted territory for me and I don't have my eyesight beside me. So this is a talent which perhaps death should have taken from me but now it lives within me useless. So I would still have my eyes but they will not have the capability to see. But then he says, though my soul more bent. And I must tell you here that this is John Milton's style here that he does not finish the idea in the last line of the first quatrain. That idea continues into the second quatrain and therefore this last phrase cannot be read in isolation. It has to be read in continuation with the second part of the poem. So he says, though my soul more bent to serve there with my maker. He says that yes, I've lost my eyesight but my soul is now more inclined than ever to serve my maker, which is to say to serve my God, my almighty maker, the one who made us all, the one who created this universe and present my true account lest he return in chide. So I must really present my true account. Now account here is also an interesting word to use. It, there can be many layers of meaning to this particular term. He could be saying that there is a certain account that I have to complete, which means a debit credit account in that sense, whatever is my lot, whatever is my responsibility, I have to fulfill it. I have to complete it. Also, the word account could mean that whatever I'm here to talk about as a poet, as a writer, I have to give that account. In both senses, it means that I have to be true to the task that I have been entrusted with by nature or by my own choice that I have exercised on my life and I have to fulfill it. I have to complete it 
and if I don't do this I feel that maybe God will return and he will chide me he will scold me he will tell me that I've not been doing my duty well so even though I've gotten um, at this stage in life I've gone blind I really am far more dedicated now to the tasks the responsibilities that I have chosen for myself or that lie ahead of me and then there is uh, an introspective question he starts to ask himself this question and I would think it is here that the poem turns poignantly autobiographical it is autobiographical all through but here the poignance of it comes out because this is a man who's been disabled and he's asking himself that if I'm disabled am I still expected to do things the way I did them when I had the talent of eyesight when I had the ability to see so he asks himself doth God exact day labor light denied does God expect me to do, do as much labor which I did when I had my eyesight now that I don't have my eyes what does God expect from me so this is a question that he is asking himself as a disabled human being that now that I have been denied the capacity of seeing the capacity of looking at things I've been denied the light that existed in my life then does God does Almighty still expect that I will do as much labor he says exact day labor which means in a very strict manner he has to still fulfill all the duties pay all his dues do it in the exact amount in the exact possible perfect way and it's going to be a very strict God that he's go that is going to observe whether or not this person is fulfilling these duties so he asks this question uh, from himself and then he says I fondly ask uh, the word fondly in the olden times also sometimes implied foolishly so he says this is not a manner in which I should be asking this question this is a very naive mind an immature mind that's asking this question and then he gives us the reason as to why he feels this question is immature because uh, to any person it would seem very logical that a person who has now been disabled asks this question that do I have to do the same which I did when I had my eyesight because now I do not have that capacity but he says this is not a question I should be asking so here he says but patience to prevent but patience to prevent so my patience exercises this duty and it prevents me from asking this question it prevents me from posing this query to myself and he says prevents that murmur now he could have said question he could have said sound he could have said um, a voice that he wishes to raise against this injustice that has come upon him but he uses the word murmur and he says that this is just a stirring inside my soul a stray thought that has come in a quiet and not a very audible thought that has arisen inside of me and my patience shuts it down and my patience comes and tells it that don't raise your volume don't become this full-blown thought it is just a murmur that is stirring inside of me and then my patience it prevents me from asking and replies God doth not need either man's work or his own gifts who best bear his mild yoke they serve him best so he gets his reply from within himself and this is his statement of belief in the aim of life in the nature of God and in the nature of the work that human beings do he believes that God doesn't need that we work God doesn't need our gifts what he only wishes is that we bear the yoke that he has put upon us and in that sense the responsibilities that he has entrusted us with and he says people who can do this are the ones who serve him best and this is how it should be done uh, here there is a biblical reference as well of the yoke not being uh, too strong of the yoke not being too heavy but it's a mild yoke that uh, God has put around man's neck of a responsibility during the lifetime so this is Milton's belief that uh, I should not be asking this question that uh, will God be angry or will God want to exact the same labor out of me the same effort out of me like I did when I was not blind no because God doesn't need me to work or God doesn't need me to offer the gifts but I all I have to do is that I for my own sake for my own life have to fulfill the responsibilities that nature has entrusted me with his 
state is kingly and he explains himself further saying that God's state is kingly it doesn't matter to him whether I offer him my deeds or my gifts or not his state is kingly thousands at his bidding speed and post over land and ocean without rest thousands and thousands of human beings millions of human beings are constantly running this race of life are constantly putting in effort day after day minute after minute second after second without rest and they are going forth with whatever they need to do in his life so his state is kingly he doesn't need this effort from one of us or from one particular individual and a lot of us are simply doing this day after day over land or over ocean basically wherever in the world they are they are putting their effort into the world and the last line is they also serve who only stand and wait so there are those who are constantly incessantly unstoppingly in the course of action but there are others who are not as active who are just standing and waiting they also serve him they also do it well and they also perhaps are following his will my personal opinion is that the last line is written in to show that it is God's will whatever we think we are doing even the responsibility that we feel we are consciously putting forth in the world completing it and doing our tasks on time as are expected out of us these are also somehow dictated by the will of God so he says that whether it is people who are rushing to do their deeds and not stopping to do them they are doing it at his bidding he is instigating them he is putting that energy that thought that aim in their minds that they are doing it and those who are standing and waiting that also is his particular way of dealing with that individual so perhaps I should not be asking this question my God will guide me and I should simply continue to do my responsibilities as I deem proper Milton here comes to terms with the loss of his eyesight and begins to feel that he is not disabled but differently abled. God's will in terms of the loss of eyesight needs to be accepted and it is God who would guide Milton onwards in the journey of life. So this is Sonnet 19 by John Milton. Do let me know in the comment box what you felt watching this video. I would love to hear from you and check out other videos on our channel. There is a lot of poetry that will interest you. If you like this video, do not forget to press the like button. Thank you very much.